So we're just here at the Krukano Dolmen. We're here with the group here, the World Explorers Club, with special guest Howard Crowhurst. We're going to have a quick look at the dolmen and just to discuss the size of it and its position in the landscape. And then we're going to go to the Krukano Rectangle or the Square, which is just around the corner, and this this quadrilateral it's called here, which again is very unusual and it's got some very specific geometry and metrology, which we're going to find out about with Howard Crowhurst. What you see here is the chamber, okay? And there used to be a corridor here, Going this way, this yeah. way yeah. which um, was said to be by Lucas and Dryden, two uh, British um, archeologists from the 19th century. They said it was 27 meters long, which would make it the longest corridor on any monument in Brittany by, by a long way. If you went to Orkney, Maes Howe, uh, it's 16 meters, I think, the corridor, so imagine 27 meters long. And um, there were stones, they, the, Blair and Reynolds in 1832 did a drawing where you can see the stones here, you know. In the 18th century, the village idiot used to live in here. Ah, and, I, yeah? I was, I was and he actually right. died in there. <laughs> wow. He actually died, his body was found in here. Um, so here, here in Brittany, <laughs> they actually have a village, every village has an idiot. They used to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I came, I, I came to live here 34 years ago, there was a, a moped, you know, um, what do you call those? You know, a like moped a bikes, moped, yeah, yeah. It parked in there. And somebody was staying in there. Huh? No, these no. people who lived here, they used, they they used it as their garage. Exactly. And people would come in coaches to visit. But uh, let's look at the monument itself because you have this incredible cover stone, so 40 tons. And what's quite incredible, if, if you want to come round with me, we're looking on how it's put up here. Let's go round this side. If you look at the end, you see three stones here. Now that's quite unusual. Uh, sometimes there's one stone at the end, a big stone. Sometimes two. Uh, very often two. Right? Yeah. But three is much more unusual. Here you have these three stones, about the same size. Now if you look at this cover stone, 40 tons, can you see how it it's, goes down inside here? The stone is actually like this, and so it couldn't be rolled onto the... Look at the detail here. This is rough stone, okay? This is not sculpted, and you see the length of the joint between an irregular cover stone and an irregular... Look at that. Yeah, yeah. That is really quite incredible. So that is one point. That's one point where the, the cover stone uh, uh, is, is supported. What about that little... Now, there? somebody put that in. That wasn't that is, there. Oh, okay. I, yeah, yeah, so I, this stone did not touch. It was not touching? No, either. this one doesn't either. You see? Wow. You take that out. Oh, wow. So this stone doesn't touch either. So that stone, okay, these stones are not touching this no. thing. Wow. So the other point is here. Three points here, which is really quite incredible also. These are not um, part of the original plan. Do you think they were added just like 100 years ago or something? Yeah, I have photos. I have old photos where these stones aren't Cover there. Cover stone is held up from the top on these dolmens. This is a common practice to make the, the cover stone look like it's floating. Important discoveries I made really in my career is linked to the orientation of these things. So this corridor has disappeared but there is a way of knowing what orientation it was, is by this stone here. Then we come back to where this little wedge stone is, but look how flat that side is there. See this stone? Oh, this, that side, yeah. Now that's a common factor in the dolmens. You have a very flat stone, which is perpendicular to the corridor. So if the corridor has disappeared, you can still find its orientation by taking the orientation of the last stone before the corridor. Okay, so fortunately, 
this stone has not moved, and so we have its orientation. Now there's another way of doing it, is by projecting the corridor and seeing if it points to another dolmen. What I've discovered is that all these places are linked together. So one mistake that people make is to think that this is a sort of individual monument. It's not an individual monument, it's part of a massive thing. That's, that's it's like, geometrical. Like, yeah, way. it's uh. part of a massive thing which was placed here on the land of, of southern Brittany. And Each yeah. monument here is the same thing and they're linked together. So if you project the angle of this in this direction, you come to another dolmen, I don't know if we'll have time to go there, called Manikerioned. Um, it's perfectly in How the projection, 3,187 meters, mm -hmm. right? So th through that building, right? Three, through that building, yeah. that's right, 3.2 kilometers. And uh, the, the angle of that is a specific angle with respect to east-west. It's what uh, is called the triple square, so that if you have your north, south and east, west and you put three squares like that, it's the angle of the diagonal of that. 18 point, if you want it in degrees, 18.435 degrees. This is precise to one hundredth of a degree over more than three kilometers distance, going from this chamber to the chamber of the Manikarian Ed Monument. And this angle here, this stone here, is exactly perpendicular to that. The whole of this hilltop must have been covered with um, uh, different stones and here's some remains. There's one under the ground here which they've put earth over, okay, and this one. Was and this then, part of that passageway or something? No, not part of the passageway. Oh, okay. It's part of a link between the site we're going to see and the dolmen. Now the first thing, you know, when people come here they often think it's a stone circle, whereas when you look at it, in fact, it's four perpendicular lines. So you have this line here, and then a right angle there, and then this line here, and then another right angle, and then this line here, and then this line here, and they're perpendicular. It's a rectangle, and it's orientated on the cardinal directions. You see this line here, these stones have never been re-erected. As far as memory goes, these stones have always been standing, these ones here. And they are in a perfect north-south orientation. So this line points straight towards the pole star. It's a north-south. And this east-west. Now if you project this east-west line, you come to the dolmen up there. The dolmen, where we just were, is in a projection of this line. And the distance, the size of this opening here, is one-tenth of the distance to the dolmen. And, and when I give out these figures here, it's not approximate, it's very precise. So you have nine distances plus one distance. Okay. So there's a direct, and it's on an east-west line. So that is that, and then north-south here, and east-west again here. And you see how the stones are placed along the line, so the lines are east-west. And so the stones, their flat side is placed along the line, there and here. All right? Okay, so the first thing that people did here was to make this flat. Here you're on a flat piece of land, whereas you can see that the field next door is sloping down. So they terraced it. So the first thing was to make this perfectly flat, which is 
you know, it may not seem like much, but it's the first job. And then the stones were erected. Now, what's very important to realize is that this is not uh, any old shape. The relationship in distance between the north-south and the east-west is a relationship of three to four. So this is three units and this is four units. Four, okay, right, this, this side, so it's a rectangle. It's a rectangle. Three, four rectangle. And if you do the diagonal of that, it's five units. Three, four, five, it's the famous Pythagorean triangle, the three, four, five, which means you have whole numbers on three sides. And that's the easiest way to draw a rectangle, a right angle. In the building trade, if they don't have their lasers and all their equipment, that's what they do. They'll measure three units, like say six meters on one side, eight meters on the other. And then between the two ends, when they have exactly 10 meters, they have exactly a right angle. Okay, so that's something very important because the, the cardinal directions, north, south, east and west, introduce the right angle. They're at right angles, north and south, east and west. They're right angles. Now, what's so specific about this spot is that at this latitude, here in Karnak, and only at this latitude, at winter solstice, the sun rises on the angle of a 3-4-5 triangle. So if you come here at winter solstice, if you stand on the diagonal here, here's the diagonal going from that corner to this corner, you stand here, Oh, well, there's a lot of vegetation, but you see the sun rise in this diagonal. It's the shortest day of the year, right? So the sun rises here at winter solstice. Then it's the shortest day, so the sun doesn't go up very high. It goes south here, and then it goes down in this corner. And it, no, this, no, this corner. It goes down Yeah, because it's the shortest day of the year. The sun just does a little trip here from this corner to this corner and doesn't go very high up in the sky. Okay, so that's winter solstice. And then the next day, it will be very slightly further north and will go up a slightly bit higher and come down here and it'll keep moving like that until we get to equinox. At equinox, the sun rises here at the east along these lines, goes up to a certain height and comes down. vegetation was very very different oh, from okay. pollen you know from that well, there was more there were barren, no more barren here really. no yeah. trees and no trees at all no okay. trees you had to go inland about 30 miles to find the first trees <laughs> so there were no trees here. Okay, okay so it was perfect the, ghost was farther out too, the temperature uh, was two degrees warmer than that all the megalithic sites are made with this specific kind of granite and always on this it's the same as the granite on the bedrock and where you have this granite, this specific kind of granite on bedrock, you have these monuments. And where you don't have that, there are no monuments. Are we standing on granite bedrock? Yeah, right yeah, now? yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Although they, you're saying they, they kind of made a... They leveled it, the bedrock, and, yeah, they exactly. Brought, yeah. they brought, so and in some places where they leveled it off, if the bedrock was higher, they sliced it off. Cut it, yeah, to cut it off. Right, yep. <laughs> okay. So, so, you know, it wasn't necessarily an easy job. But... Um, Another thing when you use the drone here, if you go up with a drone, you can see that from this spot, from the winter solstice to the summer solstice, the horizon is perfectly flat. Some things you can see at sunrise, you have the first flash of light, and then the sun comes up, and at one point it's half sitting on the horizon. Okay, so the center of the sun is on the horizon. So that's the exact angle of the 345 triangle. Why is that important? Because if you the easiest way to find it's not easy to find a perfect east-west angle okay so if you're at a latitude where the solstice gives you exactly the three four five then the solstice is when the sun stops solstice solstice comes from latin it's the so, the sun's station it's where the sun stops because the sun's moving on the horizon all the time but when it comes to the end it stops there for a few days before it comes back down, right? And if you, if you aim at that particular spot where the sun is, is, is stationary, then you can get a precise angle. And so if you have the precise angle of the 345, if you've got the angle of your solstice, 
you then only have to use you know a 12 knotted rope a three four five angle to get east west you get it from your solstice angle because at equinox that's when the sun's moving the fastest at equinox the sun changes its position at sunrise by its own size every day okay so it's very difficult to get precise measurements of equinox from observation whereas if you do it by geometry then you can get a precise east-west and you need the marking stones to do that I mean, I, well so. yeah uh, it could be on wood these were made to last right mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> these were made to last and uh, so it's a, a, a real it's it's um, it's the what I call astro geometry it's a geometry linked to the stars and I've slowly bit by bit discovered that that's how all ancient sacred sites were positioned so if you go to Karnak in, in um, Egypt, Karnak in Egypt, the Karnak temple in Egypt, its angle is, is towards winter solstice sunrise. It's exactly the diagonal of a double square. The angle is 26.56 degrees, two squares, and the sunrise does the diagonal, and the temple is built. It's the principle, and, and it's been used up to recently. The Taj Mahal is built on the same principle, although it dates from 1650. So this knowledge has been kept from ancient times in secret circles and used to build cathedrals and sacred sites all over the world. Did you ever read that? This, there was a book published by, um, you know, in England called The Sphinx and the Megalus by a guy named John Ivamy. And, what, and it, it was mainly about Stonehenge, but what his point of that book was that the Egyptians had their archaeo geometry temples like you're saying at Karnak but they found that at their latitude uh, which was you know closer to the equator that they couldn't get totally accurate um, you know mm -hmm. uh, calculations on everything yeah. and they need they realized they needed observatories at higher yeah, latitudes yeah, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. you're saying like this one and his real point was that Stonehenge mm -hmm. was built by the Egyptians mm -hmm. Because they need at at a certain latitude, because they had to yeah. keep going farther north, and, and then you would have the other ones and you know Orkneys and all Orkney, these other stories exactly. to keep going farther now, north be, to, to what, do things right. Orkney is due north of here, mm -hmm. all right. Okay. So you go due north up the meridian up there, there, one thousand two hundred and seventy kilometers. You come to Orkney, due north, and when you get to that latitude, the three four five triangle has turned round. So the solstice. Here you have three north-south and four east-west, but the further north you go, the bigger the sun's amplitude is on the horizon. And when you get as far north as Orkney, then you have four here and three here. So it's exactly the same principle. It's a three, four, five triangle, but turned round on the same north-south meridian. Mm -hmm. And Mayas How, if you take the long Mayas How corridor, the sun comes in at the sunset at winter solstice along and at, where, at building at time of building came down the diagonal into the chamber on the exact angle of a three four five triangle if you take the diagonal of the mayas how corridor it's exactly the angle of a three four five triangle so so it's exactly the so same principle the same people who are building this were building yeah, that too exactly right and it's like they were measuring the Earth and surveying the Earth and, and also building these astronomy I think, temples at, at different yeah. latitudes and, and all that. Kind and of harmonizing. And harmonizing, okay. Because these buildings are, are linked to the heavens and to the Earth uh, and they have an effect. I've done all kinds of experiments with machines, different kinds of machines that measure energetic things. And in this particular monument, it's very powerful energetically. When, when you stay here for a certain time, you can test on, on certain machines your, your energetic levels, and they are much higher after, say, half an hour spent here than elsewhere. We did an experiment a few years ago where we actually built a wooden pyramid near the dolmen there. We built a pyramid out of wood and we had this machine which came from Russia and people were putting these armbands on and it was testing global, globally their level of vitality. And we put them in the pyramids and in fact it, they weren't working. The pyramids, people had lower levels of vitality when they came out of this pyramid than before they went in. Mm. 
So, okay, but because there were a lot of people, while um, people were going in the pyramids up there, there was another group came down here to, to visit the monument. So this group then came back up to do their test in the pyramid. So we were testing people before they went into the pyramid and when they came out the pyramid. And all the people that had been in this group, they did their test before going into the pyramid and they were all really high. You see, <laughs> so it was this monument. They were kind of waiting here, you know, and this monument was actually pushing up their, their uh, well, vitality. Well, quartz and quartz is infused with I mean, it's granite, and it's infused mm. with tiny quartz crystals. Yeah. So this, I mean, granite is a you know, well, is that? Crystal. But it's also the geometry because I've done this okay. without stones. I've been on the beach at low tide. Okay. I've created exactly the same shape as this—a three-four-five triangle. The geometry, the shape, the orientation, three-four-five orientation at this specific latitude creates an energetic field. So it's like a, like the whole pyramid being fire in the center is also creating energy just by being at that shape. That's okay. it. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. It's the shape of the thing, it's the shape. which is really, so the stones obviously have an effect. Well, first of all, they mark out the spot for, mm. for long periods of time and they obviously have an effect. But the basic fundamental thing for my experiment is the geometry itself okay. at a specific latitude. Okay.